Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring on a bite-sized piece. Today, what we need to go over is a new report that just came out, a little report called the CPI Index and Inflation. So we're going to take a look at just how high inflation has actually gone and what this actually means for the crypto and digital asset market. Also, we're going to take a look at a company, a 175-year-old company that's getting into NFTs and they're going to, or actually they've already created their own NFT marketplace. We're going to talk about an uh, article where banks are just pretty much giving up and what this means for, of course, crypto. And then we'll just do a recap of the meetup that we had last night here in Puerto Rico. So we'll go over all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today it is uh, Wednesday, it is the 12th of January, another great day here in Puerto Rico, and uh, market cap continues to actually go up. We are at plus 11% or 2.07 trillion. Let me tell you, it is not easy, even me being these in, in this space for years and years, uh, to see everything just go down and down and down and down. Because at some point you're like, well, how, how far is it gonna go? That's why I dollar cost average in and dollar cost average out. I try to buy all the dips, but like I said yesterday, I'm all dipped out. So this is like one of the few ones I, could, I couldn't even buy, but I wish I would have because you know, 11% in 24 hours, not too shabby. And if we take a look at uh, what is going on with the actual price action themselves, it's looking pretty good. I mean, if we take a look at uh, the Bitcoin price, almost 44,000. Ethereum's up massively, uh, 30, almost $3,400. Binance Coin is at number three space. Tether drops down because people aren't tethering up, thankfully. Uh, Solana's up, everything's up. Cardano up 11% in 24 hours. And XRP, you know, hey, good for XRP. Polkadot, 12, 12%. But just remember, even though we're up in 24 hours, if you look at this seven day change on the right hand side here, you'll see like there are still some uh, gains to be had, hopefully, and some ground to make up. I mean, Ethereum is down 12% over seven days. Binance Coin, 5%. Bitcoin, 5%. Cardano, 3 XRP, 3 I mean, you can just see that there's still a lot of ground that we need to make up from what just happened. I mean, except for near protocol, that seems to be immune to everything. And uh, now in that number 17 spot, I actually picked some of that stuff up yesterday. So, uh, or actually, excuse me, couple of days ago because I didn't have uh, much money to do anything. So that's what we have as far as the market. Let's just break into today's top story, which I think you're going to hear this all over the news. You're going to hear this all over uh, YouTube and Twitter and things like that. CPI and inflation. So the consumer price index, this was just released. And it's going to be important because we want to see, we want to measure the sentiment of the actual consumers and what they think about what's going on. Because remember, in this market, it's really what people's thoughts and feelings are. Sometimes it's just not so much about data because we are unfortunately emotional creatures and people sell out of fear or greed as they buy things up. So consumer price rises half a percentage in December and pushes inflation rate to nearly a 40 year high of 77, 70% of 7%. So uh, not as transitory as the Fed Reserve thought. They thought it was around 4 or 5%. Now we're seeing 7%. Maybe down the, down the road we'll see 9%. Some people say, some people have been saying it's a 7% for a long time. Some people say it's even at 14 or 15%. We just know that things are up. It's an insidious tax that kind of eats us all away. So well, how do we do that? Well, whatever you're investing into, you got to make sure that you at least keep up with inflation. And that's why if you're sticking things into your uh, savings account, uh, you're losing money left and right. Not financial advice, just financial opinion. Actually, that's just fact. I can't even say that's uh, opinion. Okay, so here's what we got. Consumer prices rose half a percent in December to push the increase in the cost of living last year to nearly a 40-year high of 7%, indicating a high U.S. inflation is likely to persist, persist into 2022. So right now, you at home, as you're thinking to yourself, uh, have you had a raise in the last year three years, five years? Are you keeping up with the rate of inflation? Are you keeping up with the uh, cost of living? If not, uh, it's a it's a pretty much important and it would actually behoove you potentially to take a look at some, some different things to invest into. Of course, in this channel, we talk about crypto and digital assets, but I get worried. I get worried when I see these types of numbers come out because how many people can actually keep up with inflation? Not too many. And I think it's just just eating things away at a very slow pace. And before you know it, it uh, becomes, as they say, gradually, then suddenly. And here we are today. 
All right. Inflation has soared due to strong customer demand and ongoing labor and supply shortages. You can see that all across uh, the nation, probably globally. I even see that here in, in Puerto Rico. It seems like you can't find anybody to actually do uh, construction because either the people that are working, they already have jobs or people just don't want to work. And uh, you see that all over the place. Uh, by contrast, or while price pressures are likely to ease in 2022, economists estimate the rate of inflation will probably exceed 3% by year end. So I think it's going to go down a little bit, but sure. Okay. By contrast, inflation averaged just over 1.5% a year in the decade prior to the pandemic. So everything is pretty much going on with this pandemic. Pretty tough to do to uh, uh, create goods and services when everything's locked down. The statement is here from uh, Chairman Jerome Powell. He said, the economy no longer needs or wants the very highly accommodative policies we've had in place to deal with the pandemic and the aftermath. I have to disagree with Jerome here. I think uh, the stock market would love to have them step in and just pump money all day long because that's what has led to one of the biggest increases in recent memory for the stock market itself. And because of them uh, injecting all this money in quantitative easing and pumping it into uh, the markets, that's why we've seen such a huge rise. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people on Wall Street are like, uh, Jerome, we'd love you to uh, keep pumping in money. Maybe I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Uh, rent rose 0.4% uh, for the third month in a row as housing emerges as a bigger flash point of high inflation. And then to finish up, with the Fed moving to try to head off price pressures, investors don't appear as alarmed about the latest reading of high inflation. So right now it is 11 a.m. here in Puerto Rico, meaning it's uh, Atlantic Standard Time. Uh, it's 10 o'clock in New York. It is nine o'clock uh, uh, for the central time zone, uh, eight o'clock uh, mountain and seven o'clock Pacific. So this is the most early, the early information that we can actually get. So we saw what's going on with the crypto market. Let's take a look at the traditional finance space and see if it affected anything. No, doesn't seem to. Seems to be like people are like, yeah, we knew that the whole time. So not a big deal. We knew that the Fed was going to come out. We knew that the inflation rate was higher. We knew the CPI was going to go up. And we knew that they're going to taper off things because they already said it. So maybe not a big deal. And even if we take a look at the NASDAQ, it didn't really seem to affect them at all as well. So if we take a look at this, maybe, maybe uh, some of that, that jitterness, jitteriness is over and uh, some of the consumers and some of the investors might actually uh, have a steely spine and go, okay, we know what to expect. We know what's going to happen. But again, uh, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, and then off we go. And speaking of preparing, if we're talking about uh, the inflation and the housing market and everything else that's going on, just remember, uh, I have a wealth preservation strategy. And one of those is uh, using Masterworks because I buy fractionalized share of uh pretty expensive art pieces because guess what uh the super rich don't care what's going on in traditional markets or anything else they just want to buy these super expensive they want a basquiat they want a banksy they want a pablo picasso and uh, with this i can purchase fractionalized share and they have 13.6 percent price appreciation uh from 95 2021 so again you probably say well rob i don't care about that because i can make a ton of money in crypto true but there's just different strategies and my goals aren't your goals. I'm just here to do a little preservation. Also, uh, I trust capital. If you don't have a Roth IRA here in the States, remember it is tax-free. And then also all the trading that you do within your Roth IRA is tax exempt. So if you feel like, hey, Bitcoin might go down, you can sell your Bitcoin, your Roth IRA, put it into cash, wait for, for, wait for it to go down and then buy it back up within your Roth IRA tax exempts. And then also, if you're looking for different things about uh, uh, real estate, I've got a real estate playlist, all the things that I've used, me and my wife have used for short-term rentals, how we purchase these houses, how we take a look and find the best places, and so on and so forth. Just two videos. We're going to add a third one. We'll talk about this tomorrow. So if you're looking for those three things, there is a link in the description. It looks just like this. There's also an explainer video on iTrust and Masterworks, so you can really get your feet wet and understand it. And also, all the different uh, links are right there. And and that's it. So check that out. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece where we're talking about this company, which is the Associated Press. I saw this and it didn't make much sense to me. I was like, why would the Associated Press do this? But now it kind of makes sense. So 175 year old news cooperative, the AP or Associated Press plans to launch an NFT marketplace. And my question was, how the heck did they do that? 
and they did it by doing something very simple. I'll, I'll show you in a second. So the 175 year old news cooperative, the AP revealed that the organization is launching an NFT marketplace using the Polygon blockchain network. First of all, great job. <laughs> if you were going to launch this on Ethereum, I would be like, well, that makes sense because you know, you're kind of out of touch. But if you're using Polygon where the gas fees are next to nothing and it's a layer two solution, then you can have a lot of people actually use these NFT marketplace and actually buy things without getting uh, crushed with Ethereum gas fees. So if they're going to use a Polygon, great, pretty good job. So looking good so far. And then uh, this will allow uh, NFT collectors to collect the news agency's iconic photojournalism. Polygon-based NFT market will launch on January 31st, 2022. This is a statement from the AP. They say each NFT will include a rich set of original metadata, offering collectors awareness of the time, date, location, equipment, and technical settings used for the shot, which is, I mean, you can do that. You can buy uh, uh, the actual photography, but some of these things like the like the settings and, and more the, the the nuanced data, I guess you can put it in there and you can do a lot of different things than NFTs. I mean, you can give them like, uh, as they, they can, you can give them access to more, you know, different types of, uh, of, of photos. You can give them access to like behind the scenes stories. You can do a lot of different things. And then as, as far as like with NFTs, it can be like, it's not just a copy of a copy. You have this particular one. And that's what the whole thing, as far as a non-fungible token actually does. But when I was looking at this, I'm like, well, how'd they do it? I didn't highlight it, but they're using this system called XOOA. I don't know how to say that. I'm going to say Zawa probably nailed it. So, Zawa, we'll say, it's probably not right. Uh, this is pretty interesting. It's, they have a flagship product, the white label NFT marketplace. It deploys a ready to use end to end marketplace in just 45 seconds, meaning anybody can actually do this. And uh, for crypto mainstream audiences, easy to use UI, user interface, fiat and crypto payments, custodial wallets and non-custodial wallets. And it's, I guess a lot of different brands are using it. It's got full compliance and intellectual property protection. That's pretty cool. Protects against malicious users. Royalties management. If you don't want to pay a company like that, well, you can just do it over here. Environmentally friendly. Nice. White label capabilities and permissioned or public chain. So when I saw this, I kind of thought, I was kind of thinking to myself about just how we see the internet in the very beginning and how things were actually worked out. You know what a pain in the A it was to actually create a website? Well, then they actually had like website builders come out, uh, like with, uh, what was it, uh, GeoCities. And then you had another one. I mean, GoDaddy has their own thing and, and then all the different ones that are out today. So you don't really need even coding. So this is the kind of like the same thing. To so do like an NFT marketplace, just like, we'll just use our white label service. And if I take a look at that, I'm like, wow, I think that... Um, crypto and the internet have parallels. And this is a nice little chart. I think this was from Real Vision uh, before, but internet versus crypto adoption. And you can see on the right-hand side, total, us total users and millions. Uh, and you can take a look at the timeline at the top, 1990 to 2000 for the internet, 2014 to 2024. We're on our way. And just like Kathy Wood said, she thinks that uh, Bitcoin will be well over 100K once we hit a billion wallets, and it seems like we're going in the right direction. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our second to last. Thanks for giving up. <laughs> and uh, this one's sent to me by uh, LM, and thanks LM for this one. And I saw this and I'm like, that pretty much makes sense. So this is from uh, Citibank to exit Mexico consumer banking business. And the bank said Tuesday, just yesterday, it would exit consumer, small business, and middle market banking in Mexico. So first of all, what's middle market banking? That's if you have uh, businesses between that uh, have revenues of 50 million uh, to, to 1 billion. So they're gonna just take that off the table. Uh, also consumers and also small business. They're just like, no, nope, we wanna deal with you anymore. And this was best. This is best known as uh, uh, Banamex. Those businesses that we just talked about, those three, consumer, small business, and middle market banking, account for about $3.5 billion in revenue in the first nine months of 2021, uh, or about 6% of the bank's total revenue. Citibank, Citigroup will be keeping its investment banking and institutional business in Mexico, as well as private bank operations. And uh, so I'm like, well, why, why change it over? This is why. 
Uh, Ms. Frazier, who's the CEO in March, said that her goal has been to simplify the bank by concentrating on wealthy consumers and credit cards. So again, it's a free society. You can do whatever you want to. It's an, it's an open system. Uh, but I think banks are kind of, and I don't know if this is with like crypto related. Well, you can debate about that in the comment section. But I think if you're looking at small businesses and different transactions, I, you know, you really do get eaten up in, in fees. Like I use, I use PayPal and I use uh, Stripe, but it's 2.9% uh, uh, for each transaction plus 30 cents or 1.9%, or even 1%. But how much could you do as a small business if you didn't have to have those fees like we see in like El Salvador with the Lighting Network? I mean, you can just have, I mean, almost free transactions uh, and just use a second layer solution such as that. So I think maybe banks are seeing the writing on the wall. It could be something different, but I just think it's something to note. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that. Comments. And then lastly, and we'll get out of here, the meeting, the meetup recap. Let me tell you, uh, yesterday was pretty fun. I, I must admit, it was... Uh, we had a uh, Puerto Rico meetup uh, here at uh, Michalos, I think it was called. And uh, we just made it very informal. And uh, I was just, in all honesty, I was like, man, I hope uh, it'd be great if a couple of people show up. <laughs> and then uh, as, we, as we got through, I mean, you know, we had like a couple of people here. And then we had, uh, all of a sudden it was like, before I knew it was like 30, 40, some odd people there. And it was interesting. And I want to say thanks for everybody who showed up. And I just want to do something like that just to kind of meet people and uh, give back because some of the different meetups I've been to so far are kind of stuffy and people just talking about things just way, way above the level. Like again, like the Wall Street guy coming in and talking about how great uh, Bitcoin futures contracts are. Sure. Uh, this was, I think, a little bit more productive for the people that listen to this channel. And we'll do it again. But that's it for today. So look, um, if you liked today's video, found a little value, uh, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.